In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a scrolling thumbnail panel and this is what the finished product looks like. So there's a panel here with a whole strip of thumbnails in it which are actually buttons and when I roll into the panel it activates. Now if I move my mouse to the right of center the whole list scrolls to the left. If I move to the left of center they move to the right and the speed at which they move is determined by how far away I am from the center here. So this could be a great thing for um, photos or even uh, video thumbnails if you want to have a whole list of uh, video thumbnails that you could scroll through here and uh, clicking one would start that video playing. Just one possible application of it. So let's jump over to Flash and I'll show you how to build it. Okay, The first thing you want to do once you're inside of Flash is create a new document with a locked actions layer. And I'll just go over to the library and I'll show you what I've set up so far. So I've created a bitmaps folder and inside of there I've just imported 10 different GIF files into the library and each of these GIF files represents one of the thumbnails for our panel. And they're all 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Then what I've done is I've created a thumbnails folder and I've taken each of those GIF files and turned them into a simple button. So let's just go into one of these and I'll show you what I've done. So I'm going to edit it. So for the normal state it's just the uh, thumbnail graphic itself. For the overstate, I've created a new layer and I've put a black stroke around the thumbnail. So this is what will happen during the overstate. Again, I've done that for all 10 of my thumbnails. Now, if you want to couple this tutorial with the XML tutorials that I've done to make a more dynamic uh, thumbnail panel, you can do that. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just doing it the manual way. Okay, so let's go back out to the root timeline. Now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this panel because this will be the actual layer that holds our thumbnail panel. Okay, now I'm going to insert a new movie clip. Choose movie clip and I'm going to call it panel. Okay, now inside of this panel movie clip I'm going to go to my thumbnails and I'm simply going to drag it, them out one at a time. I'm just going to place them to the right of each other, spaced approximately where I want them to be. They don't have to be perfect because we're going to align them up in a minute. So there's five, six, and if you run out of room, there's a bug with the uh, uh, interface here in Flash that it won't let you go anymore to the right. You can just select them all, hit Control A, and then drag them over to the left so that you have more room. Okay, let's finish this out. There's seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so now I want to align all these, so I'm going to hit Control A to select them all. Then go to the Align panel, and I'm going to choose this one to align them all to the same top edge. Then I'm going to choose this one, which spaces them evenly horizontally, so there's always the same amount of space between the thumbnails. Okay, once I've clicked that. Okay, now they're all aligned with each other. Now with them all still selected, I'm going to put them at the zero, 00 coordinate in our movie clip. Okay, so that's all we have to do. Now if you had more than 10 thumbnails, you could just keep adding uh, to the right as many as you wanted. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the root timeline. Okay, now I'm going to highlight the first keyframe in the panel layer. And now let's actually drag out our panel movie clip. And I'm just going to center this approximately on the stage and let's give it an instance name of panel. Okay, now we want to create a mask around uh, or on top of this panel movie clip and that mask will determine where our thumbnail panel will be. So I can lock this layer now. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this layer stroke grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to choose a black stroke and the color is irrelevant. You just need to make sure that you do have a fill color because that center fill is going to, we're going to turn into a mask which is going to mask out our panel. So now I'm going to come down and I'm going to drag out where I want my panel to be. Now I'm choosing to have three thumbnails shown at a time. You could change the size of that however you wish. Okay, Now with this drawn, I'm going to hit the V key to go to the move tool. And I'm just going to select that center fill. Make sure you don't have the stroke selected. I'm going to right click and choose distribute to layers. 
and that puts the white fill down below the stroke onto its own layer. And I can rename this to mask and right click on it and choose mask to turn it into a mask which masks out the panel movie clip. And you can see now that it's done that. Okay, now we can go ahead and start doing some of our action script. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to set an on rollover state for the panel movie clip that as soon as we roll onto it, it's going to start an on enter frame which is actually going to be scrolling the panel from left to right. So let's highlight the first keyframe in the actions layer and open the actions panel. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just to create that on rollover for the panel movie clip. So I'm going to say panel dot on rollover is equal to panel over. Now panel over is a function that we're going to write next, which is going to start our on enter frame. Okay. So let's write that function. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we're inside of this function is to start the on enter frame going of the panel movie clip. Uh, it's going to be calling this other function we're going to write, which is actually going to move the panel from left to right. So we're going to say this dot on enter frame is equal to scroll panel. And again, scroll panel is a function we're going to write in a minute. Okay, then what I need to do, and let's go back out to the to the stage is a very common problem in Flash of the problem of nested rollovers or the fact that Flash doesn't support nested rollovers. Now what that means is if I set the on rollover state for the panel movie clip none of the buttons inside of that movie clip will be able to receive mouse events so I won't be able to click on any of the buttons inside of here which will make our panel pretty irrelevant. So what we need to do is as soon as we roll on to the panel movie clip, we're going to delete the on rollover event state for the panel movie clip. That will allow these thumbnails to receive mouse events. And this is just a little trick to overcome this problem of nested rollovers. Let's go back to the code. So the next thing I want to do is just to delete this dot on rollover. Okay, and now you're probably thinking, well, if I delete this on rollover state, what happens when I mouse off and then want it to start it again? That's why we need to take this stroke and double click on it so you have all of the strokes selected. And we're going to turn this into a movie clip. So I'm going to hit F8. I'm going to call it stroke and give it an instance name of stroke. So essentially what we're going to do here is when we roll onto the panel, it's going to start that on enter frame going. It's immediately going to delete the on rollover state of the panel movie clip so that these thumbnails can receive mouse events. Then we're going to be checking if the mouse moves outside of the bounds of the stroke movie clip. If it does, then we're going to stop the on enter frame and then reset the on rollover state for the panel so that it can do it all over again. Okay, so now we're going to determine what the boundaries are of that stroke movie clip because we're going to be testing to see if the mouse is outside of there. To do that, we're going to use a method uh, of the movie clip class called getBounds. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it b for bounds is equal to stroke dot get bounds. And to the get bounds method, we need to send which coordinate space we're referring to. Now since this is all happening on the root timeline, I'm going to say underscore root. Okay, so what the get bounds method does is it returns an object that has four properties, x min, x max, y min, and y max. Now those four values determine the boundaries of our movie clip. And that's what we're going to use to test with. So now let's go ahead and create the scroll panel function, which is going to be called through our on enter frame. Say function scroll panel. So the first thing I want to do, oop, I spelled that wrong. Okay, so the first thing I want to do in this function is to test whether the mouse is outside of the stroke movie clip. If it is, then we're going to reinstate 
the on rollover for the panel and delete the on enter frame. So we're going to use an if statement. Now we're going to test for all po four possible conditions. So we're going to say if underscore x mouse is less than b dot x min, which means that the mouse is to the left of the stroke movie clip, or underscore x mouse is greater than b dot x max, which would mean that it was to the right of the stroke movie clip, or underscore y mouse is less than b dot y min, which would mean that the mouse is above the movie clip, or underscore y mouse is greater than b dot y max, which would mean it's below. So we're testing if any one of these four are true, then that means that the mouse is outside of the panel movie clip. So if that happens, we want to reinstate the on rollover for the panel. So we're going to say this dot on rollover is equal to panel over. So that's identical to what we did up here. And now we want to delete the on enter frame because we don't want it running when our mouse is outside of the panel movie clip. So we say delete this dot on enter frame. Okay, so now we've taken care of that. Now if this returns false, it means the mouse is inside the panel and we want it to start moving based on our mouse position. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out the distance between the center of the panel movie clip and our mouse because that distance will determine the speed and the direction. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it xdist for x distance is equal to underscore x mouse minus now we want it to subtract the halfway point of our panel so to find that out since I've centered the panel on the stage I can just come down and see I, my movie is 500 pixels wide so if I put 250 it's gonna put in right here so I want to find out the distance between my, my mouse and this point right here let's go back to the code Okay, so I'm going to put in 250. Now you could put stage dot width divided by 2 here if you wanted to. Okay, so essentially what's going to happen here is if my if the x position of the mouse is to the left of center, it's going to return a negative number. If it's to the right of center, it'll be a positive number. And that difference is what will determine the direction that the panel scrolls. Okay. So we'll get a little space here. Okay, now let's actually move our panel. So to do that, we're going to set the underscore x property. So I'm going to say panel dot underscore x. Now I'm going to say plus equals because I want to add to the current x position. And what we're going to add to that is x dist divided by, and then the number that we put here will represent the speed at which the panel will move. So I'm going to put in 7. Now if you put in a larger number here, it would move slower. If you put in a low number, it would move faster. And this division is what will give the animation of our movie clip a nice easing motion. Okay, so this isn't finished yet, but let's go ahead and test what we've done so far. Let's go and test the movie. Now you can see when I roll on, it's activated, but it's moving in the wrong direction because when I move my mouse to the right I want the panel movie clip to scroll to the left but it's moving in the same direction that I do which is not generally how these should move so let's go back and fix that it's a really simple thing to fix all we need to do is to just put a minus sign in front of this calculation so basically is just gonna take the exact opposite number uh, that this comes up with so let's go out and test this you can see now when I move to the right, the panel moves to the left. And when I move to the left, it moves to the right. And that's exactly what we want to happen. So now there's a couple of other little problems. We see when I move to the right, there's my last thumbnail, and there it goes. It just keeps going. Again, when I move to the left, it just keeps going. So we need to put in boundaries here to say once I get to this point, it shouldn't move to the right anymore because there are no more thumbnails. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 
So what I want to do is I want to put in a couple more if statements in here uh, that's going to set up those boundaries. So I'm going to say if panel dot underscore x is less than whoop, panel dot underscore x is less than or equal to and now we need to go out and find what those constraints are. So let's come down here. I'm going to unlock the panel uh, layer with our movie clip and I'm going to hide the mask just so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, now I'm going to select the panel movie clip and I'm just going to move it all the way over to the right to where I want it to stop. So here's the last one and I want it to stop about there. So let's go down to the properties panel. You can see the X is at 89. So let's go back to the actions. And actually this one should be greater than. So if it's greater than or equal to 89, what I want to do is just to set the X position to 89 so that it doesn't ever go any further than that. So I say panel dot underscore X is equal to 89. So essentially if the X position gets to 89 or if it got higher than 89 it would put it right back at 89. So it'll never go further than that. Now we need to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm going to copy and paste this code block. And we want to change this to less than or equal to. And now let's go out and find that constraint. So highlight the clip. And I'm going to scroll it all the way to the left. And let's just say about there. So we don't ever want it to move more to the left than this. And you can see it's at negative 751. So now we go back and just change these numbers. It's negative 751. If it's less than or equal to negative 751, let's just put it at negative 751. Okay, now we should be looking pretty good. So let's go out and test this. Okay, here we are. And we can see now when I roll on, it activates the panel. If I move to the right, you see it stops now at that last thumbnail. And again, move to the left, it stops at the last thumbnail. So this is a pretty simple implementation of this type of scrolling panel, but it can be very useful, again, for creating a video thumbnail list or a photo thumbnail list, just anywhere where you need a large number of thumbnails to be displayed in kind of a small and compact space.